To determine what kind of forces have displaced stratigraphy, you would look at the displacement relative to the fault line. So if you are looking at the hanging block and the foot block and looking at their orientation relative to the fault, you should be able to figure out whether it was compressional or tensional forces. So the hanging wall or the hanging block is the one that is atop of the incline of the fault, whilst the foot wall is the one below the incline of the fault. Now I had mentioned in the previous video that I like to think of the fault as a ramp. This is because if you were to take a ball and roll it down a ramp, it wouldn't blow your mind that it rolls down it. You'd be like, that's normal, that's how gravity works. If you were to put a ball on a ramp and it went up the ball or up the ramp, you'd be like, whoa, that's reverse of what happens. The same thing with fault lines. When you have the hanging block, which is on top of that ramp, you have it moving down that slope or displaced downward along the fault. That's normal. It's normal for stuff to go down an incline. If you see it being displaced up, you would refer to it as a reverse fault. So a normal fault is where the hanging block is displaced down along the incline of the fault. A reverse is when it is displaced up of the incline of the fault because that's opposite of what you'd expect for, for gravity. So it's called reverse. There's a subtype of reverse faults referred to as a thrust fault. A thrust fault is when you have a really low angle of that fault line. So that angle, rather than being about 45 degrees as this one is here, it would be lower, making a more acute angle around 30, 35 degrees of angle or less. So a reverse thrust fault is when it happens at an angle less than about 30 or, or 35 degrees. So when you're looking at it and you see normal faulting, when something is normal faulting, the two blocks are allowed to move away from each other, spreading out, allowing something to move down. It's a passive movement. So it's got this pulling or tensional force that happens on it. If you see it compressed or smushed together, in order to push something up a ramp, you need energy pushing it up there. So you think of that one and it's going to be compressional. When you have the displacement as reverse or thrust faulting, those are both going to be results of compressional. You have compressional forces. There is a third type where you have the two uh, masses of rock being displaced past one another, and that would be a shear force. So if you have side to side, like shears where they move past one another, it's called a shear force. So tensional, compressional, shear.